Welcome to today's informational webinar, um, the subject of which is Corporate Award, which is SIPs Applied Learning Route to Achieving the Professional Accreditation MSIPs. And we'll talk through exactly what that is, what it looks like, and um, also do a bit of an introductory few slides to SIPs just to kind of set the context of who we are, where we are, and the kinds of things that we are doing. So my name is Peter Richardson. And I've been at CIPS for eight years and I work in a role that's really around global learning solutions and advisory services. So um, I also manage two partnerships for SIPS, one that's based in West Africa and one that's based in Malaysia. So my job really is to speak to people like yourselves and also organizations about this type of learning solution that we're going to go into today. So the actual slide will take about 25 to 30 minutes for me just to talk through and we'll be going into quite a lot of detail about the program and what I would ask you to do is if you do have questions that you put those into the Q&A chat function on the webinar and then at the end after I finish the slides sort of 25 30 minutes in I'll work through those questions and try and answer as many of them as I can on today's call so we have about an hour in total 30 minute slides and then up to 30 minutes for Q&A if we need it so again if you have any questions as we're going through just put them in the Q&A uh, chat function and we will come back to those at the end okay so I'm sure some of you will be familiar with SIPS, the Chartered Institute for Procurement and Supply, but you'll see on the screen just a few kind of facts in terms of where we're at now and what we're doing. So you may know that we are a membership organization, uh, the largest of its kind in the world, and we have a global network of around 200,000 people spanning 150 countries. You can see on the map to the top right of the screen where we have locations, the blue circles being where we have our own offices and the red circles are where we have our exclusively approved partners that do in occasions deliver some of the programs on our behalf. Where I sit within SIPS is part of the business that helps other organizations and individuals to excel in procurement and supply. And we've been doing that at SIPS since 1932, so over 90 years of innovation and excellence in procurement and supply chain management. We are also a chartered body, so we hold Royal Chartership, and we are the only organization that can award the accreditation MSIPS to those that go through our accredited learning programs. You may not know, we're actually a charity, so a non-for-profit, so any surplus revenue that we generate through our learning programs are reinvested back into for good of the profession type activities okay what we do in, in terms of supporting individuals and organization um, is split broadly into two areas on the left we have people and on the right we have function so in terms of developing procurement function we have something called advisory services uh, we have a functional accreditation and award called the sips procurement excellence program and we also have our ethical procurement and supply accreditation we're not really going to be going into any detail of any of those today but they're here just sort of for future reference in case anyone on the call did want to talk about those in regards to their own organization at some point in the future what we're really looking at is more around people development developing capability and uh, in the process allowing those people that go through these accredited learning programs to achieve their professional license MSIPs. So you'll see there's a, a few things on this list here. Um, we have Digital Academy, we have a training needs analysis, we have a whole catalog of off the shelf skills training courses, and we have that ethical procurement and supply accreditation for individuals as well. But what we're focusing in on today is that accredited learning route to MSIPs, which is also known as the applied learning route. OK, now, before we go into that, I'm just going to dip into a couple of other activities that SIPs do in uh, in terms of um, who we are and what we do. So, as I mentioned, we're a non-for-profit. Uh, our mission is to improve people's lives through better procurement and supply chains. And as part of that, the SIPs Foundation does, for example, fund those from a deprived background through some of our qualifications programs. But also we have kind of programs such as Health Procurement Africa 
which is jointly funded with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And that's really about ensuring those that work in um, healthcare procurement on the continent of Africa have better access to knowledge and are uh, more efficient at procuring medicines and healthcare equipment. We also, uh, you know, aside from what a lot of the clients that we work with in the private and public sector, we do a lot of work, for example, with organizations such as the United Nations and their various subdivisions. Plus, as I mentioned just now, we have that program with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And we also have a number of development programs with the World Bank and the European Bank for Reconstruction Development. OK, so I just wanted to spend those couple of minutes setting the scene as in a sense of where we are with SIPs, what we're doing uh, and giving you a bit of an update. And now we're going to move on to really looking at the, the program itself. So the um, Corporate Award Applied Learning is a, a route to MSIPs. And that is something that people often want to obtain through going on these types of programs. So we're just going to spend a couple of minutes looking at MSIPs, what it means, what the benefits are to you as individuals who may gain this. And also just, you know, when you're thinking about perhaps creating a business case, um, to get funding from your employer, you might want to kind of talk about some of those benefits organizationally to your employer for putting you through such a program as the applied learning route. Okay, so the outcome is MSIPS, which means you would be a full member of the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply. And you'd be able to use that accreditation, those letters MCIPS, after your name. And that signifies to the world that you have been awarded this membership for a level of excellent knowledge and experience in procurement and supply chain management. And that's very much a globally recognized accreditation. Okay. Now, from an individual perspective, for you going through such a program, then clearly the kind of core outcome is that you would develop your own capability. You would get better and more efficient at what you do in your job role. Okay, so it's about ensuring that you're working to best practice and it's also ensuring that you're working to an established um, methodology. Okay, so you are improving your own capability in the world of procurement and supply chain management. Because some of these programs are shared, so you might be in a group with people from different backgrounds, different sectors. And as I mentioned, we have these 200,000 people globally that are part of our network. You become part of that. And so the point there is you begin to learn from outside of your own immediate sphere of influence, which can be very good. So, for example, if you're in a learning group with someone from automotive, but you're in finance, then you can hear about how they may approach an issue in automotive that you perhaps could get to get a takeaway from that to take home as well as the core learning so you've got that component as well but ultimately achieving msips it develops your capability but it also shows your professional development that you've invested your time in a formalized education program that you've been assessed and that you've been awarded a grade of membership at sips your professional body or a qualification okay so that's the individual benefits on the right of the screen if we just have a little look um, from an organizational perspective so really if your organization is sponsoring people through such a program as this really it's useful for their external stakeholders their customers giving them confidence that you are working with a highly competent and skilled and professionalized uh, team of procurement and supply chain people okay Organizations often use this in their kind of reward, um, re you know, talent retention space and also in their recruitment campaigns that they have such a program that is an established route to achieving the professional accreditation. Um, but essentially, there are benefits on both sides. And if you need any more help around the organizational benefits, you can contact me and I can provide you further information around that, which would help you potentially uh, create a business case internally within your own organization to gain funding for you to go on such a program as this. Okay, so that's MSIPS. And that really is the outcome that we're looking at here. So what we're going to do now is just look at the applied learning route from um, a top level view. 
So we're going to have a little bit of a summary slide here and then we'll go into more detail. And what can be useful is just to contrast the applied learning route with the traditional exam route. And you'll see sort of how it fits together. So in the bottom part of the screen, we have the applied learning route, which is the focus of today's call. But then we're going to contrast it here with the traditional examinations route across the top of the screen. OK, so let's just look at the exam route first. So to achieve MSIPs through the exam route, the highest entry point is SIPs Diploma Level 4. Within that, there are eight textbooks and eight exams, and it takes around a year to a year and a half to complete. OK, now by way of contrast, we have the Applied Learning Programme down the bottom here, and the corresponding Level 4 programme is known as Practitioner Level. OK, that takes 12 months to complete. Now, the syllabus and the learning outcomes from the SIPS Diploma Level 4 at the top on the exam route are mirrored into the practitioner level down here. The key difference being is that the content is delivered not by textbook, but by a series of expert led workshops. And the assessment comes not in the form of examination, but there are assignments and project work. OK, so that's the kind of key difference. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. If you were to continue on this exam route, so as I mentioned, SIPS Diploma Level 4 is the highest entry point on the exam route. And that would take you 12 to 18 months. You'd then move on to Advanced Diploma Level 5, another 12 to 18 months. Professional Diploma Level 6, another 12 to 18 months. So all in all, on that particular route are 23 textbooks and 23 examinations. So it takes quite a degree of self-guided and self-motivational study. Um, down here, what we have at the bottom is the upper of the two levels for the applied learning route. Now that combines the syllabus from level five and six up here on the exam route into one program, the advanced practitioner program. And that takes 16 to 18 months to complete. So whether you go through the top route there, the exam route, as I mentioned, 23 textbooks, 23 exams, then you will, if you're successful, be awarded MSIPs at the end of it, full membership. OK, and we've talked about what that means on the previous slide. That is this globally recognized uh, professional accreditation for excellence in procurement and supply chain management. Likewise, if you choose to go down the applied learning route, you'll go through practitioner instead of level four up here, and you'll go through advanced practitioner instead of level five and six up here. And the outcome is the same in the sense that you would also gain full MSIPs, again, full membership. And we've discussed what that means. So that's just how it kind of contrasts and compares with that traditional exam route. OK. Now we're going to go into the applied learning route in a bit more detail. So on this slide, I'm not going to read through all the description on the left. I'm going to share these slides with those that have attended today. So you'll be able to read through in a bit more detail yourself afterwards. But essentially, um, I just want to go into a bit more detail about the actual structure of the program. So as we've talked about, essentially, we have a timetable of workshops over a period of time. For example, if it's that practitioner level four program, it's over 12 months and the workshops are delivered virtually. They're led by a SIP subject matter expert. And at the end of the workshop, you could be given a task and the task is in the form of writing an assignment. And at the end of the program, for example, in the advanced practitioner, then there's also a project of 10,000 words. And we're going to talk about that project piece in uh, in more detail later. But essentially, if you look at the graphic on the bottom right, that's really a summary of the structure of the program. So it's these series of uh, expert delivered interactive workshops. And this is where you learn your theory. This is where you learn your content. And then you will be given the task of writing a practically uh, assessed assignment. And in the case of the advanced practitioner, you'd be given the task of writing a business related project. OK, and those are then assessed and graded and then you can be awarded MSIPs at the end of it. 
All right. So perhaps when I share the slides, just read through what's written on the left hand side of the screen in a bit more detail here. But essentially, I've, I've just summarized it by looking at that graphic on the right there. So then let's just take that down into the next layer of detail. OK, so we've already talked about how this program is practical learning workshops delivered by experts followed by context specific assignments and an improvement project that's designed to drive learning directly back into your organization okay so this is basically about the practical application of the learning we talked about the exam route before the exam route is reading a textbook and then being formally examined with a multi-choice exam or an essay exam under exam conditions you're being measured on your ability to re retain the information in the textbook here in the applied learning program you're having the content delivered through those workshops and you're being measured on your ability to practically apply the theory to real life challenges in your workplace so what we can say is that really this type of program fuses the theory and the learning with your job role what you see on the screen here is the lower level four program successful completion results in you being awarded diploma level membership of SIPS and this is quite a kind of foundational fundamentals type program you'll notice that there are five modules each module is two days in duration in a virtual classroom and that is delivered over a period of 12 months you'll also see down the bottom here that after module two is assignment one and that is a 3000 word assignment and you have about four weeks to complete and submit that. Then there's another assignment, assignment two, 3000 words. Assignment three is also 3000 words and a final assignment of 5000 words. Prior to each of the delivery of these modules will be a piece of digital pre-learning that you would access through the SIPS learning management system. And that could be a piece of e-learning, reading a document, perhaps listening to a podcast and you're required to complete that pre-learning prior to attending the classroom session okay so there is support in terms of digital pre-learning you'll have the tutor support in the classroom and the other thing to mention is that within SIPS there's a job role called a program lead and a program coordinator and they would be assigned to your program and they would be your support person throughout the duration of this program to reach out to for help and to reach out for tips and advice and so on. Prior to module one, they would also carry out uh, a program induction, which you'd be invited to. So that's orientation, that's meeting the group, that's tips for success, okay? So the point I'm making here is that this is a fully managed program and it has a lot of support wrapped around it, which then feeds into the success rate of the program. If you look at the bottom right hand of the screen, you'll see this program has a success rate of 95%, which is very high. The 5% that perhaps aren't successful on this route, then perhaps they just dropped out because they had a change of life circumstances or uh, perhaps they just found that it didn't suit them or they changed careers. OK, so it's a really high success rate. And that is testament not to the program being easy in any way. It's testament to the level of support that is wrapped around it for the learners. So you'll see there the practitioner level program. Um, as I said, it's uh, it's fundamentals, it's foundational stuff. You can see that in terms of the module titles. So you've got expenditure, contracts, sourcing, negotiation. So if we then look at the advanced practitioner in the bottom half of the screen, this is building upon that. This is elevating your competency level from that kind of tactical operational level of competency through to the more professional, advanced professional levels of competency. And you can see that it's pitched at a way more strategic level. You'll notice there are six modules. Um, module one is two days, as is two and three. Module four and five are one day each in duration. Module six is also two days. Okay, And if you look at the titles, again, you'll see what I mean about how this is pitched at a more strategic level. You've got leadership and management, commercial management, global strategic supply chain management, category management, contract management, and project program and change management. 
there are four assignments here. Uh, assignments one to three are 5,000 word each. There's a joint assignment for module four and five, which is 7,000 words. And the project piece at the end is 10,000 words. Okay, and we're going to talk about that project more in a moment because it's really key to this program. Essentially, that project is an improvement project where you identify uh, a policy, a process within your workplace and you draw out recommendations for improvements or an efficiency or a saving or a reduction in risk, whatever it might be. So it tackles a live challenge within your workplace that you are making recommendations for improvements that can then actually be used within the organization. And as I said, we're going to talk about the project in a bit more detail later. But essentially, that program advanced practitioner is delivered over 18 months. Again, there's digital pre-learning per module. There is also SIPS program lead and program coordinator support. And for successful participants, they would gain full MSIPS chartered professional status through completing that program. OK. So that's a bit of a sort of zoom in and in terms of the modules itself. Again, and when we talk about this type of program, we can look at the benefits from an individual perspective, which we're going to do now. And we're also going to look at them from an organizational perspective, again, in case you need any assistance in terms of building a business case to get funding from your employer. But essentially for you, if you're going to go through such a program, then ultimately, if you go through that advanced practitioner level program, you're going to gain the globally recognized accreditation MSIPs. As I mentioned, you're going to be developing your capability, working to best practice uh, and gaining a lot of internal recognition from your peers and colleagues that you've gained this professional accreditation. It's going to help build confidence. As mentioned, you're going to get that dedicated program manager support and you also get access to those expert tutors. The bullet points on the right are quite interesting, uh, especially the top ones. So we talked about the assignments. If you failed an assignment on your first submission, you can resubmit it up to two more times. OK, so three times in total. Now, if you did fail it on your first submission, you get detailed written feedback as to why you failed it. You can have a support call with the program lead and you can also have a support call with the tutor for that module. That means when you resubmit, it's highly likely that you will pass. OK, now your score would be capped to a pass only. You wouldn't be able to achieve a merit or distinction on a resubmission. But my point is that if you're on the exam route, if you take an exam and you fail it, you don't get any feedback. You just have to pick up your textbook, rebook the exam and resit it. Here, we're trying to set you up for success by saying, look, this is, you know, this is why you failed. This is how you can improve. And we'll have conversations with you to support you on that. OK. As I mentioned, there are no textbooks with this program. So you would have access to the SIPS learning management system. So you would log into the SIPS website and that's where all your content would be held. And that is also where you would access uh, things like the slides for the classroom sessions, handouts, reading lists, additional material and links to other places on the SIPS website where you can do background reading and research and so on. So that's all hosted neatly in the learning management system, again, wrapping that support around the, the kind of core classroom learning sessions. Just to also mention that the program includes SIPS student membership for the entire duration of the program as well, in case you were interested to know about that. So lots of benefits from an individual perspective. Organisationally, then, and as I said, the reason I include this slide is that you may need to go to your manager or your HR and say, look, I'm going on this program. Um, these are the costs and these are the reasons why organisationally it is of benefit to you as well as it is to me individually. So what's key to that is when we talk about that project in particular, it's delivering a business improvement plan. So as I said, it's examining a process, a policy, a way of working, and it's actually drawing out a conclusion that's really about recommendations for an improvement, a more efficient way of working. It, you may have identified um, a, a reduction in risk or a reduction in cost. So that is a distinct return on investment for your organization that you're actually delivering a business improvement through these projects and assignments. Okay. So 
the rest are listed out there and I've kind of touched on those. Um, I guess the, the bottom one on the left is really key as well, that actually this type of program is verifying your ability to practically apply learning to the workplace. So exams are one thing you can prove through an exam that you've retained information from a textbook. Here, the key difference is you're actually being measured on your ability to practically apply learning to challenges within the workplace. Okay. The other thing is when we talk about the project piece at the end of the advanced practitioner, that 10,000 word improvement project, your line manager, your key stakeholders can input and discuss with you what particular challenge your project should tackle. And that means they can also align that to the overarching strategy of the business. So if within your organization, sustainable procurement, for example, is at the top of the five year strategic plan, then you might want to make sure that your project is tackling a challenge within that space of sustainable procurement to maximize the value of the project and to assure it's aligned to the overarching strategy. OK, so lots of things to consider there, but ultimately, because of the project and assignments, it is often considered a return on investment for the organization sponsoring you through. So as I said, I include that slide just in case you need to take a business case to your internal stakeholders to agree funding for such a program. So we have said that the content is delivered by SIP subject matter experts um, through these virtual workshops and classroom sessions. But I guess, you know, the question is, well, who are they? What do they do? So uh, I guess the key thing to say that the tutors that deliver the training are absolutely world class in terms of their background, experience and knowledge. They would have worked in a senior position within procurement. Uh, usually at a very strategic position within a global organization and have a very well-rounded career and background. Okay, They would have achieved MSIPs or in some cases FSIPs. Um, but essentially, if you do go on such a program, when you interact with them, when you hear their delivery, you'll find that indeed that they, they do bring to the table expertise, experience and that world-class knowledge. Okay. The classroom delivery itself, just in terms of the style of that, it is very interactive in nature and it encourages proactive participation from the audience. So you'd be expected to have cameras on, microphones on, to be inputting into those workshops, very much discussion based. Of course, there are periods within the workshop where they're talking through theory, but then that's heavily broken up with activities such as case studies, role plays, examples, breakout sessions, whiteboard sessions, and so on. So it is delivered virtually, but it works very well. After each delivery, we collect detailed feedback from participants, and that would include you if you do go on the program. And then we feed back participant feedback into our constant improvement process internally here at SIPS. Okay? And that's how we've ended up with a really good delivery model here. So that's an ongoing process, an ongoing improvement. The assignments then, and again, I probably won't spend too long on this slide. This is something that you can look at um, when I share the slides after after today's webinar. But there is this uh, slide here on what an example assignment would look like at the practitioner level. For example, the module being managing expenditures with suppliers, which I think was module two on practitioner. The task then is to identify product, service or category of spend and outline its importance and impact your organization's stakeholders. OK, so that just gives you a bit of an example of what a task and an assignment might look like. Uh, when we look at the project on the advanced practitioner program that comes at the end, um, this is a 10,000 word dissertation, as I've mentioned, and because it is a significant piece of work, then there's an awful lot of support wrapped around that as well. So you see on the right hand side of the screen, we don't just leave you and say, right, go write a 10,000 word improvement project. There's a whole phase of support and work around it that you see on the right hand side to support you in producing that project piece. And that includes a, a workshop day with a subject matter expert looking at how a project should be structured, how it's graded, how to submit it, tips for success, looking at potential project titles and so on. And then over the course of around three months, you will have check-ins that are one-on-ones with 
a subject matter expert and they're really to coach and mentor you in the progress with your project piece to ensure that when you submit it that's a strong cohesive and valuable piece of work to your organization and then you'll be awarded at the end of it okay just to recap then that the project as i said is key to the return on investment in that it must tackle a challenge faced by your company and it must deliver a benefit directly back into the organization and as i mentioned you can then align it to the business strategy. My example just now, sustainable procurement. Of course, it will be different from organization to organization, but ensuring that that project's aligned to strategy maximizes the value and return on investment for that improvement project. Okay. Again, I'm not going to read through these too much, but just included in the deck that I'll send out, we've got some example project titles just to give you a sense of what people have done in the past for their 10,000 word project at the end of the advanced practitioner. So I, I'm aware I've done a lot of talking and um, we're going to have, we've got a couple more slides here. This slide's going to be just a bit of a recap on what I've said so far. Uh, and then we're going to look at the, um, the fees uh, and, and what the next steps are. If you feel that this is the right route to you to gain your professional accreditation. And then after that, we'll move to, to Q and I can see that there's, quite a few questions building up in the Q&A, which is great. And if you do have any questions, please do continue to put them in there. So let's just do a recap then. So we talked about the Applied Learning Programme, um, which is basically theory delivered by subject matter experts through virtual workshops and assessed via assignment and project work. There's two levels. We have the lower level practitioner, which is a level four program reflecting the syllabus and learning outcomes from the level four diploma on the exam route. It's a fundamental kind of foundational piece and it leads to being awarded diploma level membership of SIPs for successful participants. Those are some of the typical job titles that you might find on the practitioner level program. So it's not limited to those because obviously Job titles vary from organization to organization, but, you know, this sort of level of buyer and so on is typical of those that we might see on the practitioner level. And that takes 12 months to complete. At the bottom, then we have the advanced practitioner level program, and that combines level five and six into one program here. Much more strategic level, as I mentioned, about elevating competencies from tactical operational up to professional advanced professional. And that will gain you full MSIPS chartered professional status. And again, there's some example job titles of those that you might find on such a program. And that takes 18 months to complete. OK, so that gives you a bit of an overview. We're going to touch on eligibility now. So the practitioner level is open to all, no prerequisites. Anyone can enroll in the practitioner level program. Now, in terms of the advanced practitioner, there are three means to being eligible to gain access to advanced practitioner. OK, so number one, obviously, if you complete practitioner, you can then be eligible to join advanced practitioner. OK, as you'd expect. Number two is if you have completed SIPS diploma level four on the exam route, that also allows you to gain direct access to the advanced practitioner level program. So you can switch routes if you choose to. If you've completed level four, you can automatically enroll in advanced practitioner, taking you through to full MSIPS in 18 months. OK, now there is a third means to gain access to advanced practitioner, and that is via a competency assessment. So if you're a bit more experienced, if you're feeling confident, if you've looked at the syllabus for practitioner and you've looked at the syllabus for advanced practitioner, you think, you know what, I kind of feel that my expertise belongs in advanced practitioner. You can opt to take an online competency assessment. And there's some information about it in the bottom left. It consists of 130 multi-choice questions and you'd be benchmarked against our competency framework you'd receive a nice report that identifies your strengths and your development needs. And if you pass that assessment at the right level, you can essentially bypass level four, gain direct access to advanced practitioner and go through to full MSIPs in 18 months. OK, there is a fee for the competency assessment and I'll cover that off in, in the next slide. So that's our recap. 
Um, there's a bit here on the competency assessment. If that route interests you, it, it kind of covers what I've just said there, but um, that's in the slide deck for your reference. Just one other thing to mention, I think, you know, today's webinar is really kind of focused on these open syndicated programs that you see at the bottom where we have one or two people from various organizations coming together to um, create the study group of up to 16 people. We have intakes on those monthly, both at practitioner and advanced practitioner level, and the lead time to enroll in a program is about three months. OK, they're really popular. They fill up quickly and they are always fully subscribed. OK. So um, if you're here today in this webinar and you have a larger team within your organization, or perhaps you're even a manager that's come on to understand this program, you might want to consider the top half of the screen, which is an in-company program. So if you've got 12 people that want to go through, let's say, the advanced practitioner level program, we can provide a, a timetable and a program that's exclusive to your organization. OK, so they're the two mechanisms for which we deliver this program. So we're really focusing today on, on the open syndicated programs, which are mixed groups from different employers. So when we look then at those that come through the advanced practitioner program, they are then entitled to join the SIPs graduation. Uh, and that's a real good opportunity to network, to celebrate success, to get your mortarboard and gown on and to attend the graduation and go up and collect your scroll as you are awarded MSIPs. So a great day to celebrate success, lots of photo opportunities and a really good atmosphere. So we hold several of those all over the world. The one in the UK is usually at Peterborough Cathedral and it is a great day and a great event. I'll be sharing these slides after the call, as I mentioned, and you might want to take some time just to read through some of the testimonial that sits in here. Again, we're not going to look at that right now, but it's there for you to read through when I share the slides with you. And then just in terms of commercials then, so the fees on the screen, a couple of things to say are for programs that are run out of the UK. SIPS does have regional offices. The fees may be different in those offices. So what you're seeing on the screen is specific to the UK. And the other thing to say is that these are for those syndicated open programs. So the, the collective groups of up to 16 people from different companies, different backgrounds. OK, so that's a fixed fee per head for practitioner. It's four thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds and advanced practitioner is five thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds. If you do choose to take the competency assessment that I mentioned is this sort of fast track route in terms of gaining eligibility into advanced practitioner. That's an additional £250. As I mentioned, just a couple of things then before we move to Q&A. Places are limited to 16 participants on each group. We have a practitioner and an advanced practitioner intake monthly. The lead time is three months. Okay. How you book on to a course is by emailing me or email your inquiry to me, or you might want to be seeking further information from me. Indeed, you might even want to have a one-on-one -on -one call with me if there are things that you want to ask about that are specific to your circumstances. Okay, so I include my email here, and I'm open to you just dropping me a line and expressing an interest, requesting more information, or to diarise a one-on-one -on -one call to discuss your own personal circumstances, okay? But the... I guess the key thing is here, you will not be enrolled or be able to book a program, place on a program until you actually issue payment or a purchase order to cover your fees. OK, and that is payable in full and upfront of program commencement. OK, so I'm about to move to Q&A. Uh, I guess the final point is, as I said, that you have my email address there on the screen. That will be what I will share with you tomorrow as part of this slide deck. I'll also be sharing you a link to the recording of this presentation. And I guess what I would encourage you to do if you believe that the applied learning route is suitable for you and you potentially want to look at how you might go down this route to gain your professional accreditation MSIPs that you send me an email and that we can then start talking about potentially enrolling you. Or as I said, there may be some steps in between that where you may want to have a an individual conversation offline or you may have a query that's specific to you i'm open to having those conversations and those emails so please just do drop me a line okay so that's it for the slides so i'm now going to move to uh the q a elaine is asking is the program available in french 
That's uh, an interesting question, Elaine. We're actually piloting the practitioner level for a program in French right now. So um, that's going through a pilot and may become more widely available later this year. But if you have a specific thought about that, Elaine, you might want to just drop me an email and we can perhaps continue that conversation offline. Uh, Maru says South Sudan. Yeah, so SIPS Diploma Level Membership is what you get awarded when you complete Level 4 on the exam route. It's also what you get awarded if you complete the Practitioner Level Program, SIPS Diploma Level Membership. Elaine, if you're, if you're doing a Master's, then again, if you can put that in an email, because we can connect you with our team that look at exemptions. So, that, so it depends if your Master's is accredited by SIPS or not. Um, anonymous attendee is asking, what is the minimum experience? Oh, the question's moved there. What's the minimum experience required to take the applied learning route? So as I said, with the practitioner, there's no prerequisites. Everyone is eligible. All I would do is encourage you to um, look at the syllabus for practitioner to make sure you feel it's comfortable. For the advanced practitioner, we've got either completing SIPS diploma on the exam route, completing the practitioner, or that competency assessment route. Okay, so Ludmilla, um, now I'm working listed. So I think I've described Ludmilla in the presentation, the journey through to MSIP. So if you're unsure of that, perhaps you can rewatch that part in the recording that I'll share with you tomorrow. So Johan is asking, will we be given a professional diploma um, certificate? So if you completed practitioner, you would be given a practitioner level program completion certificate for corporate award, and you would also be awarded diploma level membership. So Johan is also asking, I'm doing level five and I've got one module to complete. How would it fit into this program? So. As you're aware, advanced practitioner combines level five and six. So the advice is if you are already part way through level five, and in your case about to finish level five, is to continue on the exam route to level six. There's no point in you switching at this stage because you'd be duplicating a lot of learning. The only circumstances we would recommend someone come off level five on exams is if they're really, really not getting along with it very well and they're early on, like module one, they don't like it, they might want to reconsider switching. But if you're if you're into level five and you're well into it and you're going along well, my recommendation is to continue along that route. Um, so you're asking here, how do I become a member? The membership's included in the program. So when you enroll in a program, we set your membership up for you. How many people are usually in the same cohort? Hannah, that's a great question. It's limited to 16 people, and we're pretty strict on that. Okay, so it's never any more than 16. The reason for that is, as I've described, the sessions are really interactive. It's about pro proactive participation and discussion. So we have to take into account the two to two participant ratio. So we never go above 16. Johan, the costs of the route are on the screen right now. Um, I'll be sharing the slides with you, so they're there for you to reference. Level four always has eight modules. Maru, eight modules is on the exam route. So when we talk about the applied learning route, the equivalent is called the practitioner level that has five modules. Now those five modules take in all the learning outcomes and syllabus from the eight modules in the exam, but they're just structured and presented in a different way. Johan, there are no exemptions if you've done most of level five. And as I mentioned, my recommendation is to continue along the exam route if you're well into level five. There's not really much point in switching into the applied learning route from the exam route unless you're really not getting on with it. But if you're well into five, continue into six and through to MSIPs through that route. Um, Jigga, this is the, the, I don't know if you were present in the presentation, but we've covered all that and I'll be sharing the slides with you. So you'll be able to reference that and also the recording. 
So, Maru, having diploma membership will be the same as having SIPs level four. I don't understand this. All right, Maru, I think we've covered that. So I'm happy to take that offline if you'd like to have a discussion about that separately. Hello, Peter. I observe the fees paid in Nigeria varies for once. How is it so, please? So if you, Adeo, if you drop me a line, I can connect you with our regional partner in Nigeria who'd be able to take your inquiry forward because they do run a program in Ghana and Nigeria. How can we get our employer to finance our studies? Um, Zishan, there's a couple of slides in there that look at the benefits from an organizational perspective. And they're the slides you need to pick up with your employer because there are some distinct benefits and returns on investment in this type of program that will help with your business case in terms of gaining um, funding internally. Johan, the courses do not take place at the weekends. They are always delivered on a Monday to Friday. Um, as I mentioned, this type of job, re this type of um, learning program really is about fusing the learning with your job role. So it's not something you do outside. There may be some research or assignment writing that you do at the weekends or evenings, but the actual core learning, those workshops are always delivered between Monday and Friday. Uh, Maru, can someone not yet working in procurement? But yeah, I think, Maru, you could look at that and that would probably be the practitioner level program, that foundational program. Jigger, which route is more convenient and helpful, management entry route or corporate award? So management entry route is not, an, uh, not a learning route, it's an experience route. So that only applies to a very small handful of people that are very experienced. Um, if you want an actual learning program that's going to elevate your competency, then it's the applied learning route. So it's quite a long one. I'm sorry. So again, if you're asking about um, PIN, if you're asking about accredited programs, then you need to um, contact our exemptions team and they will be able to look at what you're doing and how it relates to MSIPs. So I wouldn't recommend doing this program if you're um, on a master's or whatever it is. But my point being is if that course is accredited by SIPs, which some university courses are, then you may be able to gain MSIPs through that route. But that's something that I'd have to connect you with a specific team in SIPs that would look at that for you. So if you send me an email, I'll forward it onto that team and they'll be able to answer your question more fully. Maru, there is no project in level four. There are three 3,000 word assignments and a 5,000 word assignment at the end. The fees are payable in advance and in full, uh, Humphrey. So there are no sort of um, payment plans. Um, Otto Bong, this is a good question. So you get three opportunities to submit an assignment and you don't get charged anything extra for any of those three submissions. Now, if you're still failing on submission three, you'll have a support pool, but call, but the question will come, is this program really right for you? Because what we find is if people fail assignment one, they're, you know, a high percentage are actually passing on submission two. So, but, you know, just to answer the question, there's no additional fees. So the fees that are on the screen are all inclusive. Okay. Jigger, that may be an, an error. The, the duration of the course, I can assure you, is 12 months in duration and 18 months. And I'll bring that up with our website people to, to adjust it so it's more accurate. John, uh, I think that that's something that we'd have to take online because it's very specific to you. So if you could drop me an email on that um, about your level seven degree and how it might kind of work into this. Can the fees be paid by spread across duration? No, these are payable upfront and in full, the, the fees. Do you have to be in a job to go down the applied learning route? What if you're currently unemployed? That's a great question. You can do it. Um, clearly the assignments and projects have to focus on a business and the advice around that and what people have done in the past if they are unemployed that they just approach a local business and say look can I do this improvement project for you on your procurement practices so that does work and it you know it can still work um, Atif I'll be sending the entire slide deck out and as I said within there there's a couple of slides that look at organizational benefits and those are the ones that you can use to build your business case so anonymous attendee, are the workshop dates advised at course? Yes. So it's all scheduled out. Um, you'd receive a timetable. 
and you can block those off in your diaries. So it's all um, fixed over time and we give you that well in advance. If you miss a workshop, it's a really good point, really good question. If you miss a workshop, we record all the workshops, we host them on the learning management system, you then have access to them. Clearly, the expectation is that we would want you to attend them for the live delivery because your participation is important and you get the Q&A and that type of thing. But if there are exceptional circumstances like you're sick or you have pre-booked leave and you miss the actual workshop, then there are ways to catch you up. So we share the slide deck with you. We share with you a recording of the delivery and you can also have a support call. Does this have to be undertaken in the classroom? This is delivered fully virtually. Um, so in the case, if it's an in-company program, we can do it face-to-face, -face, but for these shared syndicated open programs, it's always virtual. Bhumila, I, I have your contacts, thank you. And you'll be included in the comms that go out tomorrow to all the participants that will have a full informational pack, okay? Charles, your 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 question is very, very specific to you. So I'm just hoping you can email me that um, rather than addressing it here because it's a very specific scenario. So if you could please drop me an email, I'd be happy to take up that query, inquiry offline. Lucy, can this be something you do as an individual or is it intended an organization puts forward a cohort of people and where can I find the syllabus for both levels? Great, thank you, Lucy. So Lucy, I'll be sending out the syllabus for both levels tomorrow along with the slides and a link to the recording of today's um, webinar that, that, we're, that we're still on now. Um, the question's disappeared, so I can't see what the rest of it was. Let me just see if I can go back to that. Can you do it as an individual? Yeah, absolutely. So there's two routes to going onto this program. One is what we call syndicated open, which is shared. And on that, you might have one person from one organization, two from another organization, one from another organization, and they make up the group of 16. And that's the pricing that you see on the screen right now. So for, you know, for smaller companies or individuals, we have that syndicated open model and they're the monthly intakes that we have at both levels. Um, but if you are a manager and you have a team of 12 people that all want to do advanced practitioner, we can offer uh, an in-company program exclusively to that organization. And that has a different pricing structure. So if that is your situation uh, or you're a manager considering this for your team, drop me an email and we can kind of take that conversation offline and discuss how that works. John's saying practitioner or advanced practitioner. So John, I think that the, um, the advice is to look at the syllabus uh, for both, try and get a sense for where you feel you are against your experience and then kind of go from there really but again you know we could look at your background and give you a bit more advice if you want to drop me a line we can we can deal with that do we go through you if we want to go down the exam route early kaylee um it, we can book you on to um, the exam route it depends if you want to do self-study if it's self-study it's via the sips website if you want to be part of a learning group that has tutor support and is a package of textbook e-learning exams then yeah we can book you on to um, the exam route but if it is just self-study where you just want to book your own exams and buy your own books and that's served via the sips website but i could give you more information on that kaylee if and tell you a bit more about the packages we have about the exam route if that's of interest. Kellyanne, is the course relevant for social care services? It's very generic in terms of delivery, Kelly. So it's really around um, theory and content that can serve all sectors, all industries. So it's not sector specific in any way. Um, so it can be applicable to all sectors, all, um, all industries. Um, there are no exemptions in the advanced practitioner. If you've done an MSc in logistics and supply chain, then I would suggest you just check to see if the provider of that master's is accredited by SIPS, in which case you may already be eligible for MSIPS. But there's no exemptions into the routes that I've talked about today from that. 
Norbert, I have completed level six. How do I navigate to become member SIPs? If you completed level six, Norbert, you should be able to log into the SIPs website and upgrade your membership to MSIPs. Uh, and if you have an issue with that, my recommendation is just to contact customer services and they'll be able to help talk you through that. But if you've finished level six, essentially you're then enabled to upgrade to full membership and gain, gain that MSIPs accreditation. Muker, thanks for the information. Thank you. Yeah, and I have two questions. Procurement assistant, eligible for credit. Yeah, so procurement assistant could take on practitioner again. When I send out the syllabus, just have a bit of a look at that to make sure you're comfortable with it. And certainly, yeah, procurement assistant could go on to that type of program. Can an individual enroll for the practitioner level if organized? Yes, absolutely. You can self fund, no problem at all. Tarlan, by gaining level four, five, and six, can I get M6 automatically? So if you any pro learning program in SIPS that you complete, the onus is on you to log into the SIPS website and manually upgrade to MSIPS. Okay, so those that have completed level six, you are then entitled to upgrade to MSIPS and you do that via the website. And Tarlan, if you need help with that, contact SIPS customer service and they'll talk you through that. Uh, when will the program start? We have monthly intakes. There's a three month lead time. So if you wanted to book onto a program now, the next opportunity would be kind of May and that May program is filling up quickly. So more likely June. OK, Uruj, I just I think I've just covered that. When does it start? Tiffany, if you have completed level five and would like to complete level six, can you use the route to complete level six and become qualified? Tiffany, I think, you know, I probably covered that off earlier, but my advice to you, if you've completed level five on the exam route, there's no point you switching to advanced practitioner because there's no exemptions. You'd have to do the whole program. So you'd be much better off continuing finishing level six on the exam route, then upgrading to MSIPs. Can the payments be done in installments? No, it's, it's payment in full and up front, although that does vary in, in some countries. So if that's an issue to you, just drop me a line and I'll connect you with um, the local um office depending on your location so typical workshop program um full day which time zones so yeah typically it starts they start at 9 a.m latest end time is 4 p.m depending on the q a um the ones that i'm talking about are uk time zone but we do have different time zone delivery around the world so to um, this anonymous attendee i would recommend just dropping me a line letting me know where you are in the world and then i can connect you with the local provider that will have a timetable that's perhaps more relevant to your time zone retesh how can i get the competency assessment started retesh you'd have to email me and then um, provide a payment for 250 pounds. And then I would gain you access to that competency assessment that you could take on demand. Uh, and when you finished it, you get a report, which is quite a nice report identifying your strengths and development needs. But it also will tell you if you have scored at the required level to join the advanced practitioner. So Ritesh, send me an email and we can set that up for you. Please advise if I did not pass the assessment, can you enroll for the advanced diploma? So if you fail the competency assessment, you've got two options. One is that you accept that and say, well, actually, I'm perhaps at a different level and I need to go on to the foundational program practitioner. OK, or you can choose to wait six months, address the development needs that are in the competency assessment report and then opt to retake the assessment. But there has to be a six month gap between failing the assessment and retaking it. The reason being that the expectation is that you go away and address some of those issues and try and develop yourself. Um, but again, you know, it, the competency assessment is a scientific way to say, look, you belong on this program or that program. But you can choose to retake it in six months. The majority of people that don't come through the competency assessment will go onto the practitioner level program rather than opt to retake. Um, Anonymous ND, as an NGO, would you not be out? Not on this particular program. Tarlan, by gaining four, five, and six again. So I think I've answered that already, Tarlan. I've also answered that. When will it start? It's monthly. Next program, May, June. Looking forward to receiving the deck. Okay. Thanks, Afra. Um, so, Nagima, there's. Um, 
there's intakes every month throughout the year. If that, if you're doing your doctor and have 10 years of procurement, if that, I would suggest you email and we'll talk about the management entry route. If you've got that level of experience, it may be that the management entry route is a possibility for you, which is an experience route whereby you evidence your background experience. You have an interview, you do an assessment and you can be awarded MSIP. So if that could I ask you just to email me and I'll I'll send you some information on the management entry route. After time level six, can I get MSIPs? Yep, I think we've covered that. You can upgrade via the SIPs website. I have a level four diploma. If that, okay, yeah. So if that with the level four diploma, you could either use that to gain direct access into the advanced practitioner program, which would take you through to full membership MSIPs in 18 months. Or as I said, if you've got like 10, 20 years of experience and you're operating at a very strategic level, then it may be that you can look at the management entry route. So there'd be the kind of two routes to MSIPs for you. Um, anonymous attendee um, includes SIPs membership for the duration of the program. Does that mean that you do not pay an additional membership fee? What if you have already paid prior to starting the program? That's a good question. Yeah. So let's say, for example, in, in advanced practitioner, it's 18 months. That includes two years membership because we don't do 18 months memberships. We only do them in years. And if you had like six months to run on your existing membership that you paid for, then we just add two years onto that. OK, so, you know, we keep it fair. Um, so if you had six months to run, you'd have then two years and six months to run because you get two years through the program. If it's the practitioner level program, you get one year's membership. I think that's everything. There's the final one there. Um, Ludmilla, I have, yeah, I have that and you'll be getting the information pack um, sent out. So I guess that's the final question. Um, lots of participation there. So thanks for all your questions and hopefully I've answered them satisfactorily. I think the follow up here from me is that tomorrow, um, once we have uploaded this recording onto a shareable platform, I'll be sending out an email comms to you all. That will include a PDF of these slides. It will include the syllabus for the practitioner level and also a syllabus for the advanced practitioner. And then there'll be a link to the recording of this webinar as well. So that's your information pack. Off the back of that, if you have any queries, obviously you have my email address. Please don't hesitate to drop me a line and um, we can arrange to talk separately about your own individual circumstances. So I hope that's been useful today. I don't think that there are any further questions. I'm going to stay here for a couple of minutes, but I think really from me, that's it. So thanks for joining. Thanks for taking the time out and I hope that it's been useful.